I mean, I Leo sort of creates a very safe space for Nancy, and he's quite a vulnerable person. He's a good per he's a good man, isn't he, Leo? Mm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he does create a safe space. You know, I think when uh, we meet him, you know, we don't know, you know we don't know what he does, and I think it's very important that Leo does create a safe space. You know, because that foundation that he lays is is one that is hopefully of growth for for Nancy. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't be a place for growth for her. You know, so I think yeah, he lays a an environment that is non-judgmental and and open to discovery which I think encourages her then to come and, and put her worries or her thoughts, anything that has been restricting her in the past, to put them out on the table and to know that she's safe to do so. So, yeah, I think it's good. Did you create much of a backstory to him? Because I know we kind of delve, we get sort of snippets, don't we, of his life and his relationship mm. with his mum and his family. But when you have a character like this, where we meet them on such sort of brief mm. encounters, do you still create this quite expansive kind of life for him before that? Yeah, I think so, because for me, it was important that although we didn't see a lot into his life, that we could sense as an audience that there is something that's bubbling underneath the surface. And... Um, and that was through my own work and through work with Sophie and also meeting sex workers that I spoke to and getting insights into their work and what they do. Um, but yeah, it was important because I knew we only have a, a few windows into Leo's life. And so those moments need to feel full because that was the exciting thing for me in the film was seeing that there was a life uh, unbeknownst to the audience, but it was very much um, live, you know, very much brim with, with something. So, yeah. And you mentioned all the sort of research, speaking to sex workers and stuff. How important was it to ensure this character had a kind of sense of agency? You know, he was, he enjoys what he does, you know, because I think there is a sort of, a, that is, it sort of goes against some of the portrayals we do see for sex workers in the in film and TV. So was it quite important for you to, having done your research, to, to show him to be someone who's actually chosen this vocation and enjoys this life? Yeah, it was actually. Mm. And I think, you know, I was, when I first read the script, I was so blown away that, you know, we, we had gotten to a place that, you know, we were writing this portrayal of sex work on screen. We were showing it. And, and from the people I spoke to, I met really incredibly um, powerful people who stood in their own, their own self-identity, who knew who they were, um, who knew that what they had to offer was of real value and and kept all those stigmas at bay that the society will, you know, has done, put on to, to sex work and diminished its kind of value. And, and I just thought Katie had done a good job of really not diminishing it and seeing, seeing it for its potential. Um, so yeah, it was important that he, he very much stood in that and embodied it. I spoke to Katie before and she said she didn't write this with any agendas, any messages to yeah. necessarily for it. But I thought the whole debate about the sort of legislation debate was a fascinating one. And it really opens up your eyes as well, I suppose, or people's eyes. I mean, the way the two characters discuss whether it should be legalised, yeah. I thought it was quite it was Yeah, I think, I think it was, you know, it was amazing that she put that in there because, you know, it's not for me to say on, on that because it's such a broad, broader issue. And it's like nothing that one film is going to ever, you know, dismount. But... What I was so proud of was just to see that there was a capacity for sex work that was really healthy and really um, encouraging and, and that we should, you know, just expose that a little bit more because I think it, because also it's the truth. It's not, it's not that it's like, you know, this is a, it's a ploy or anything like that. It's like this is, you know, this is in, in, in a sense a testimony of the people that I met who were sex workers. And, and so I think that was the exciting draw for me. I'm sure you've mentioned it. A lot today. I've spoken about her a lot, but I want to speak about working with Emma, yeah. of course. Um, and I'm sure no one else has asked you that yet today. So no, first. no, no, you're the first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Was it quite intimidating uh, but to begin with? I know she's such a, a warm, generous person and a mm. great actress who's very collaborative. But that first mm. sort of meeting, that first scene you shot with her, whenever that might, whatever that might have been, was it quite, was it quite nerve wracking? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I remember the first on our read through. We were read through. We were doing a read through in Norwich, and I looked over. She was like doing some lines, and she was just like had the whole room in hysterics, and I was like, "Oh, I'm in such. I'm in like deep. I'm in the deep end here, you know, like it's just me and her, and and that was very much um, intimidating at first. But Emma, on top of being an incredible actress and and just an incredible person, 
you know, as, as someone who's so warm and disarming and who really cares about the work and really cares about being a collaborator, I could feel that from the second I met her. So a lot of those pressures began to fall away quickly, which was relieving. Because usually when you work with someone like Emma, she's the experienced head on set. She's the one yeah. who knows what to do and how, and, and the one you sort of learn from. But in this instance, because this is such a new role for her, it almost feels like you guys were kind of experiencing this for the first time. Did you mm. find that was the case? You kind of that guided yourself. Yeah. yeah, we stepped in it together, like on, on, on e even playing fields, because we needed each other so much throughout the process because there was literally no one else. There's no scene changes. There's nothing but an empty space, a hotel room, and there's conversation. And the story happens there, the emotional journey. So as actors, you just have to rely on each other. And so that was exciting as well, because everyone was like, how is it working with Emma Thompson? And it's amazing, like, don't get me wrong, but I got to work with her in a capacity where she needed me too, which was even more exciting because I felt like we really, yeah, we really just collaborated together and made this film between the two of us, so. Despite being kind of, uh, like, as you mentioned, sort of even playing Phil when it begins, was, was there a little voice inside you going, this is, <laughs> this is pretty cool? Because <laughs> it's still quite, uh, you know, I mean, you've got, I mean, I, as yeah, absolutely. You're, you're gonna, I mean. You I used to say yeah. jokes to the director, <laughs> Sophie, I was like, that's Emma Thompson. <laughs> like, I used to do that for a while, like up until like the second week of shooting, you know she would do an amazing take and I'd be like, that's <laughs> You know, so like it was, it was definitely a pinch me moment, you know. And, uh, but I'm so glad I came out the other side because they, it can feel overwhelming, like, you know, but again, it's just a testament to the story we felt like was really important and that was our main focus. And then, you know, as a, as a director, Sophie was able to manage all those moments where I might have felt overwhelmed. I was able to just come in and be like, Daryl, you're here. You're here for a reason. You're here to play Leo, so just be confident in that. And just very quickly, there, I mean, because you mentioned obviously you're still thinking, oh, that's Emma Thompson. But you know, when mm. you sort of step onto a set like Peaky Blinders mm. and you're with Killian Murphy in a scene, mm. instead, when you're with him, do you think that's Thomas Shelby? Because because it's a series <laughs> you kind of came into. Yes, yeah. it is, that, and that's so true. Because I came in on the fifth season, and you know, at that point, the the show had really built up and become its own force of nature. So. There was a moment as well in that when I was like in my first scene, like the, the family scene, and I wasn't being addressed at all. The camera wasn't even on me, but I was just like looking around, being like, oh, I'm being peaky blinders. <laughs> you know, it's like, I think some of that is the, the, the inner boy, you know, because and I think it's important to not lose that as well, because yeah. you don't want to be so kind of self-confident. Like, you, it's good to keep that alive, but, um, you know, that's been on, yeah, on both of those jobs, this as well, so. Yeah, but you more than hold your own on both. Oh, thank yeah. you. Anyway, thank, thank you so much for your time today. Thank, thank you very much. Good, good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!